All right, so what you're looking at is a rear hatch from a Honda and it has a Lexan window and it came out pretty nice actually. Um, the problem is that I used screws instead of rivets at that time because I wasn't sure if I was going to be redoing it and the screws themselves are quite heavy. So. Even though this is, I think before I put the window in and cut all this out, it was around 25 pounds. And then after the window, uh, it went down to like 16. It's very light. So here you can see the screws. And these are like super long screws. Because at the time I wasn't sure how deep I would have to pass them through the sheet metal. So I just got the longest screws and I said I'm just going to cut the ends off. But I never ended up cutting the ends off. And so... Like, for example, in here, you can see they pass. I had to cut these holes to put the socket through to tighten them up. And they're all over here. So let's cut them off with the rigid. I might still take these out and use rivets. I'd really like to just, like, get this painted really nice. Um, but let's see. This part that we cut with the Ryobi, I feel it's strong. I'm just not sure that when I close it, if this will end up like deforming. It's strong. Um, I might like just tack some a piece here so that it doesn't bend in maybe. Um, we'll see. So let's cut these screws off with the rigid. Also, I'm not sure if I should cut like right to the edge here. Um, I'm not sure. You let me know what you think. I think this one can be cut right to the edge, but actually this piece is part of this so I don't want this to just come off but up here probably could cut cut that off cut here all off uh, sometimes it's good to leave a little bit because otherwise it just falls apart uh,
something so uh, I was gonna change the blade go back out there cut that sheet metal out it's not even that thick um, but look here first all right so first the battery was charged so like three bars left the blade look at that that is nice look how much blade we were able to use up okay so i'm about to go out there and sh put a new blade on but look at this it the screw is stuck and this is my second hot experience with a cutoff tool the first one was with the right ob and i changed about four blades four or five never did that screw get stuck so first the screw came loose and now the screw is stuck it couldn't even power through that sheet metal i don't know what the difference is between this and the ryobi but the ryobi would have no problem with that. Well, you watched the Ryobi for like half an hour. It never even got stuck. So I can't take the screw out. 
which is strange because it came loose, then I tightened it, then we went at it for like two seconds, and now it's totally stuck. So I'm going to force it loose. What about this? We'll try this, okay? You know what? Let's put it flat. Uh, put it like this. And let's just use a bigger extension. It's not like I'm cutting rebar or something like that. It's like a car door, a car door. All right, all right. Because I'm excited to show you the blade, right? I wonder if the blade got a little damaged when it was spinning. I tightened it, so I don't know how it came how it came loose like that. Alright, but what is interesting is So here's the Rye OB blade. Here is like, obviously you can use a lot more blade on this. Um, the problem with this one, it it bogs down and it, it stops, completely stops. Like you're giving full trigger and it completely, there's nothing there. It's pretty weak. Um, it just doesn't have the power for what I was doing the right obi I could do that with like half trigger it would never bog down and when it does I just realized oh I got more trigger and I just press it and it'll like plunge right through it um so that was strange should we put a new blade on it see if we can cut that out forget a new blade let's put this uh right put this other this older blade on there and see if we can use it up. See if we can use it up. All right. The Rye OB so far is the best deal on this. For $100, it smoked, kept going, cut through easy. Never bogged down. Um, all right, let's go back out there. That's enough blade, I think. You know what? I should just put the new blade on, actually. So we have the new Diablo blade. Uh, 
that's in there. Put the screw. Let's go finish that because I want that piece of sheet metal out.
Let's review. These gloves are not very good for cutting or grinding. You can see that's just from the sparks burning them up. So if you have a recommendation on this type of glove, right, um, let me know. And let's check out the rest. Clearly, again, this thing, let's take this battery off. All right. First problem is you can't stand this up. Alright, you can't stand this up. It has to because it has the battery shaped like that, like angled, you can't stand this up. The right OB you can. The other problem is that of course, like I said before, it is way back heavy, like this. And with the Ryobi, what I found is, you could see it with this too, it really wants to climb out of the cut. It wants to like climb out of the groove, right? And with this being back heavy, I think, I think that you might find that it's even more of an issue where the back is just kind of pulling the front up, right? Um, all right, let's take this blade off actually. So there, there's nothing wrong, like it didn't blow up, it didn't smoke. The screw came out nice this time. And if you don't know, like I do have a Rye OB Sawzall that I love. I made a video about it. And... I have a Ryobi bandsaw, which I think is the greatest thing, like the portable bandsaw. I just got it, and I think it's the coolest thing I've ever used. If you don't have a garage and you like to like fabricate stuff, forget about all this stuff. You can't even use this stuff without some kind of garage or outdoor space. Um, you need a bandsaw, and the bandsaw is pretty awesome, the one from Rigid. Um, but this thing kind of sucks, all right? It stalled out really doesn't even make sense. That sheet metal is not even that thick. Stalled out, no real problem. It bogs like it. I assume this thing's going to smoke sooner or later if it's stalling out that much, but it didn't this time, and, uh, I was forcing it to do something it didn't really want to. Um, I don't know, like this is smaller. Some of all this is smaller than the Ryobi, but the fact the battery is angled like this, I don't think it's a big advantage. Cause it's, I mean, when the battery's like that, it's not really in your way. I'm not really sure about that um 
It's really cool, like, venting there. Let's see how much battery it took. It had the four bars, two bars. These things, these tools do suck batteries. Um, what else? I'm going to return it. So if you have a recommendation what to get next, let me know. I really I have my heart set out for the Ryobi because I have two Ryobi batteries from the Impact videos that I never use anymore. And uh, for these kinds of tools, I'd love to just use the like batteries that I don't use, like the Ryobis, because they do suck down the batteries. And the Ryobi batteries are probably one of the more affordable kind of batteries versus the DeWalt and the, you know, whatever else. Um, so yeah, as far as the guard goes, it's easy. It's like same like the, like the Ryobi. You don't got to fiddle with anything. It has these like detents. I don't know if you can see that right there. It's kind of pops into place. Oops. Just this guard alone is cool. Uh, on the Ryobi and this rigid just the way you can go like that without fiddling with it I don't know about the DeWalt if it's just like free floating like that where you can just adjust it um, this does have the key which I will put back has a key the key on the Ryobi is way better because it actually goes through the body. Uh, I think it's way more secure. This thing is only kind of clicked in right here. Um, I don't know. Other than that, there's not much to it. Yeah, I think I'll return it and maybe pick up another Ryobi again. It doesn't, on these grinders, I always thought that they blow up easy and you just, buying a cheap one is not the, it's not like, you know, buying a cheap impact or something, like you know it's gonna burn out sooner or later. Um, and I don't even use these a lot, to be honest. Uh, but, uh, so, I think buying like a cheaper Ryobi is okay. And if it does blow up, it's not the biggest deal. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. The next ones are the Milwaukee or the DeWalt. I hear good things about the DeWalt, but I don't know. Let me know. All right. All right.